Okay, so in this video, I'm going to use the virtual machine from Turnkey and I'm going to use VirtualBox and I'm going to get tracks set up in that. So if I went off to turnkeylinux.org slash tracks, then I can download the tracks VM. And I'm going to download this, which is the streamable OVA image, which I could use with VMware or VirtualBox. And I'm going to put it through VirtualBox with this one. And I've downloaded VirtualBox, which is currently 5.2. I've installed VirtualBox. VirtualBox is ready for me to use. So in order for not to bore you with the download process, I've downloaded the Turnkey Tracks OVA. So all I do is come into VirtualBox, import appliance, choose the path for where I've downloaded this appliance. So this is the one I've just downloaded because I downloaded it previously. So I'm going to use the one that we've just downloaded. I'm just going to import it straight away. It'll take a little bit of time to import. So now comes the complicated, sophisticated part where we run the machine and see what happens. Now, some of you might get lucky. It might work completely out the box. That normally doesn't happen for me when I'm using VirtualBox and I usually have to fiddle with the network settings, but we'll go through that process if it happens. So I'm just going to click the machine I want to run and do start. Okay, so now I have to put in passwords. So I, because this is running my local machine, I don't really care how massively secure it is. So I'm just going to have a password called password. So I'm going to PA55WORD, hit OK. Confirm PA55, capital WORD. Then the MySQL one, PA55WORD. Now remember, it'd be a completely insecure machine, PA55WORD, if that was um, the passwords that I used in a real system. So I'm going to skip the API key, skip the security alerts, security updates. I'm going to skip that. Now this is telling me that the I can access the virtual machine from 192.168.1.155. So let's see what happens. 192.168.1.155. And that worked. So I'm I am surprised because very often I have to fiddle with the uh, machine settings. So it may be that because I had set this up before, it's taken a different setting. So let's have a quick look. So that seems to be working which is, is good. If it doesn't work, what I normally do, I'm just going to close this down. If it doesn't work and you can't connect and it's got an IP address, something like 10.0.0.1 or something, in the settings for your virtual machine, if you look at network, you can see here that I've got the bridged adapter and it's picked up the network card that I've got. Very often it's set, let's, I'm just going to go through these and see what the impact is. Because sometimes when it doesn't work, you might just have to choose the different settings and see which one works in your environment. So I'm going to go through that process and I will um, fast forward bits when it doesn't work. So I'm going to choose NAT to start with and then run the machine. Okay. So now you can see it's got an address 10.0.2.15. Let's put that in 10. 0 0.2.15 and that's not going to work. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close the virtual machine down. Settings for my virtual machine, network. And I'm going to do NAT network. Let's see if that makes a difference. Now what I find is different environments, different virtual machines, different operating systems, different laptops, different networks, all of these sometimes require different fiddling. And you're, that's why you're, you just have to experiment with it until it works. If you've got multiple network cards on your machine, you might need to select a different network card from the dropdown. And if something goes wrong, you might get clues like this. Networking is not yet configured. So I'm pretty sure that's not going to work. So then we have to configure it. At this point, I'm just not going to do this because we know that it can just work out the box. So I'm just going to shut this down. 
network. Now, previously it was on bridged adapter, which means it's going to use my normal adapter, but you can see I've got multiple network cards in here. So this is the one that I normally use. This is the one that my machine normally connects to. I don't normally use my internal um, Wi-Fi card. So you use the network card that you normally use and it's bridged, which means it's using that and that worked last time we tried it. So I'm also going to try internal network. Let's see what happens. So the internal network says not yet configured. Remember, I already know one that works. So if I was actually doing this real, I'd have stopped at this point. But we're fiddling with the network session settings until it works. So I'm going to do host only. This is used the virtual box host only ethernet adapter. Let's start this. Okay, so now we've got an IP address that looks fairly sensible. 192.168.56.102. And it works. So the NAT bridged basically allows the virtual machine to use my network card and it should be able to connect to the internet as well using that. I think the host only means that my the virtual machine is extremely limited just can only connect to this current desktop so I've had success in the past with the NAT bridged and the host only both of those have been fine for testing with the virtual machine so we've got two currently that work or just I think there's one left to try so let's have a look at that so I don't think that's going to work but let's try it anyway nope okay so I've got two that can work. Now, the choice then I think for me is, do I want this to connect to the internet? Not really. Um, do I want it just completely for me? Um, yes, I do. But either of those should be fine. And if you get issues when you're testing it, you might want to switch between them. Now the key and, and mo most important part is, this virtual machine, you don't have to use your normal uh, Windows environment to reconfigure the Wi-Fi through the control panel or anything like that. Everything is done through the settings on the virtual machine because your virtual machine is sitting in your main machine and it is sharing stuff. So all the settings are done through this virtual machine. Because remember, if your virtual box can connect to the web to work out whether there's new versions, then Virtual box when it's running a virtual machine can connect to the network. Just one of these drivers will work. Um, I only ever use adapter one. I think I don't think I've ever had to use any of the other adapters. Um, so I was using bridged, using my normal network card. Do that. That gives me the most flexibility. That should also allow me to test it from other machines connected to this machine if I want. But again, it's all we do is download the virtual machine from turnkey we're downloading the ova file we in virtual machine file import appliance choose it it imports it then we change the settings for the network card then we start it then we go through its install process to set out the passwords then when it comes back with an ip address that looks sensible try it in our browser if we can connect then we can start testing the tracks application from the virtual machine with turnkey um, using VirtualBox. That should work for most people. I normally do, I normally use VMware simply because I have VMware installed, but VirtualBox has improved a lot over the years. I mean, when I <laughs> um, started doing this video, I had version 4.2 installed, so I've had to update to this. Seems pretty stable, seems pretty robust, and it allows me to connect tracks and use that. So give that a shot. That's how I've started up with the virtual machine. So I guess I should really try and log in. So let me try that. I'm going to say admin, password, password, because I'm super secure. Okay, there we go. That looks good. Not now. Um, and I think I could use that now. That, that all seems sensible. If you get any issues, Use the contact form on the website, let me know, and I can try and update the video, but that is a good way to get started with the turnkey VM.